Notion is a great tool to power your company, but figuring out the best use cases can be quite challenging. I'm currently building Europe's number one Notion consultancy, which means I get a front row seat to experience how the best companies really leverage Notion to the maximum. And in this video, I'm going to share with you seven great Notion use cases for your marketing team. Plus, a bonus one at the very end of the video that you definitely don't want to miss. Let's dive in. Number one, set up a brand guideline stock. An easy one to kick us off, but important nonetheless. Make sure that within your company wiki, you set up a document to collect all your different brand guidelines. And it doesn't have to be a fancy Notion page, right? Just going ahead and structuring it so that you describe the core elements of your brand, you have your logo files here, you have your font files there, right? your brand colors, all the things that make up your uh, identity and that are often referenced, make sure to have them all in one place because it's going to make it much, much easier for other people to access it and then uh, you know reduces the question you have to answer. Plus, if you also use Notion AI, then that means this is now accessible to Notion AI. So you can either reference it whenever you create something, right? In your Notion AI prompt, you can be, okay, please reference uh, at uh, brand guidelines or it can ask, uh, answer any questions that other people have about it without you having to go in. Number two, creating a master content calendar. A content calendar is great because it allows your team to track all the different assets that you're producing right throughout the pipeline from the initial idea up until it's published. And afterwards, once it's published, you can also figure out, okay, what were my most successful assets? Now, it doesn't have to be complicated also, right? You can start very simple. So here's an example for how you could get started. What we're looking at here is the dashboard. And that's a very important concept, right? in particular when you use Notion for Business, is you always want to separate your databases, so the backend, from the front end, the dashboards that you actually use to DAG with information. We'll look at the underlying database in a second, but let's just look at this dashboard first. We see we have three sections. We have ideas, ready to draft, we have the publication calendar, and then the bottom uh, as a fourth part, actually also the leaderboard. And at every step, we see that there are database views. And this is actually all the same underlying database. All of these are your master content calendar. We just use different view types and different filters to show us the right information, the right context. So at the top here, right, you see we have this two column layout. We have our ideas on the left, and then we have this up next area on the right. You can actually make this also even smaller right than that, just a checkbox. And this is basically, in terms of the workflow, this right, you, you start collecting your ideas, you can review the ones that you have, and then you can say, okay, actually, this is the one that I wanna work on next. And you see a few things happen the second you toggle this checkbox. The first thing that happens, is it pops up under the you know next area. That's one thing. And then the next thing is, on my ready to draft my whole pipeline, right? I now see that card popping up as well. Again, right, it's all the same underlying database. We simply set filters correspondingly, right? So for example, here, we have a filter set that says, okay, when the status is idea and up next is not checked. So all our ideas pop up here until we say, okay, it is up next. Whereas here on the other side, right, it's if it's an idea and it is checked, it will appear here. Down here now, we have then the option to say, okay, now we're actually ready to work on it. And you see the second I now move this into the next area, it gets, you know, goes away again here because we only want to show our initial step here. And the second goes moves on further in the pipeline, we only have it down here. Then for our publication calendar, same idea, right? The second, I will set uh, a date on something like this. So let's me just open this up. And then I can go in here and I can say, okay, when do we actually want to schedule this? We have our published date here and we can say, okay, please schedule this uh, tomorrow. I can click and close it off. And we see it now pops up uh, here on this view. Again, all made possible by using one central database in the backend and then the corresponding filters here to pull in the relevant data. So let's look at this underlying database quickly. And again, this is a very simple example. You can expand this to whatever you need. But the idea is that you have your well, content pieces and then you create different properties that you need in order to track it. And my rule of thumb is always that and if you're unsure, you know what you should have here is, well, in the first property, that's like the object that you're tracking. Well, in this case, it's all content pieces. And then the properties that you want to add are the different questions that you need to answer about a content piece, right? So a content piece has a status, like where, where does it stand right currently in our pipeline? Is it like an idea? Are we drafting it? Are we editing it? It also has a channel probably, right? Where are you publishing it? Then when are you publishing it? If you have a certain word count, right? If you want to afterwards track impressions, engagement rate, and if you want to record the link of it. If there are other questions that you need to answer about a content piece, for example, you know, who's the person that this is assigned to, or what client are we doing this for? Well, then you can correspondingly expand the properties on this database. Now, a quick word about a more complex setup. You might need actually multiple databases. Now, in general, I always recommend that you use as few databases as possible. 
Uh, so if you have to know content, you might not start out with a general one database for all your content pieces and then use this type property that I showed, right, to distinguish is this a newsletter, is this a video. But the thing with content is you might have to answer different questions about it, right? So let's say, for example, we have a YouTube video and we have newsletters and they just have different status levels, right? News, uh, YouTube videos have all these elaborate status levels, whereas a newsletter has just these simple ones. And there might be other properties that differ, right? This might be a point where you then need to split it out into separate databases, but you still want to have a master content calendar that aggregates it all in one place. Now, thanks to new Notion database automations, this has become a lot easier. Previously, you definitely needed a third-party tool to make this happen, but now you can build a fairly robust system just in Notion. Now, this won't be a full tutorial, but if you want one, uh, let me know down below in the comments. I just want to show you the basic idea. What you do is you have in the master content calendar relations to both individual databases. You then use automations on both your uh, elements, right, on YouTube videos and newsletter, to automatically send elements for whenever you add a new one and then switch the status to, you know, not the first one. Um, whenever that happens, you add a new entry here and connect it. And then you use some fun uh, little formula logic to automatically pull in the status from the related entry. So you update and work on these parts, but for example, you know, your team lead or like management can see it all in one place. Let's just, you know, see how this looks. So our Notion setup, right, let's actually set a publication date. This is here. And let's put this and say like, you know, we are currently filming this. And then for a newsletter, we will also set like an issue date for the 21st and we'll put it to, um, you know, like actually this, this will be done already. And you see, after a, f a short delay, Notion set up the first thing, that already popped up down here. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for the automation to trigger and come through. And we see we have the status filming, it's connected to our asset, and even pulls, me, uh, pulls in the date from it. And if I change anything here, of course, right in the uh, uh, original database, right? if I say, actually, you know, this is where we're currently editing now, then it automatically switches to status here as well. Now our other element got pulled in as well, right? And we have our date, and that means we can now create a calendar view, right, to show this aggregated across uh, the board in one place, rather than having, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, all our individual ones, or that we, we never can see them in one calendar. Pretty cool uh, way to, you know, use the Notion uh, database automations for this aggregate view principle. Number three, templatize your content creation. Regardless of whether you use the single database or multi-database setup, you definitely want to make use of this Notion superpower, which is to create templates on your database that pulls in all these repetitive steps. Because chances are, when you go through the process of you know creating a LinkedIn post or creating a YouTube video, you probably follow a certain step-by-step -step process. And again, we can templatize this in Notion. So what we've done here is we've set up templates, and you can do so by simply clicking anywhere where you have the database, right? Clicking on this blue dropdown, then adding a new template. And we have here for our different uh, uh, types that are already set up. So you see, if I create a new LinkedIn post, and if I select that, you see that it uh, gives me this spinning icon in a second. It pulls in, okay, hook, story, CTA, assets, right? That's what I need to have for um, my LinkedIn post, and I could now add to that, right? If I have certain references, certain rules, right? I can just add it in so that everyone who creates a new LinkedIn post immediately sees that. Or for a YouTube video, right? If I pull that up, I get a different template. In this case, it's actually, since it's like a little bit longer of a template, right? I have my uh, my little toggles. So in these toggles, I can add other thumbnail inspiration. I can write a script after my shot list with always the things, you know, that I need to uh, do before uh, I start with a YouTube video. And then of course, also a pre-firm checklist. Basically taking a process right, that you go through over and over again, adding it to this individual element, which means you can reuse it and adapt it for every single content piece. Number four, collect campaign requests from your team. If you work in a bigger company and often have to fulfill requests for other teams or stakeholders, then this is probably one of the highest leverage things that you can do in Notion. And it's basically taking the process that happens most of the time informally, right? People request it through Slack messages, they stop you in the hallway, they send you an email. I like taking this whole thing and actually formalizing it in Notion through a series of steps. Uh, so just very, very quickly, very briefly, what is the basic idea behind this? So you probably want to have a landing page for your team in Notion. And on that, it's a good idea to have like, you know, like a section for others. Like when other people are coming to your team right from others from outside, what would they typically interact with you? What do they want from you, right? Maybe we want request design and request campaign options for the marketing team. Alternatively, you could also create, you know, this single page that collects all the different processes in the company. Uh, but let's go with this one for now. And then you have basically two options. And which one you need depends a, bit, a little bit on uh, the exact way of how you do it. But the first one would be to, uh, you know, that the button is set up that when you click it, you get this like pop-up, you know, please fill out this page. Then the person clicks continue. And we've created a new page, right? A new design request. And they can say, okay, uh, you know, something. And then they can go through the properties 
fill that out here. Maybe there's like in the page body also some additional context of what they're supposed to add to it, right? They have uh, maybe a lot of questions that we will guide them through to collect um, all the input. And after that's done, right, uh, it's an in our pipeline. We can then see how we uh, continue to process it. But of course, with the new Notion forms, we can uh, collect input even easier, right? So the second button, rather than, you know, creating a new page, let's just, sorry, look at, at this. <laughs> Got a bit too excited. So basically, right, uh, what, how is it set up? We have here show confirmation, and then we have our button, uh, continue or cancel. And then down below, we see we add a new page to the design request as empty. Currently, we don't have anything set up, but we can actually also even go ahead, right, and say, okay, request it by, should automatically be filled out by the person who clicked this button to make it a bit uh, easier and more streamlined. Request design, on the other hand, that one is connected to a form. So basically it says, what, uh, please open the what do you need form in center peak, which means if now someone clicks here, they get a different experience, right? We open up this form and I can say, okay, who's, what's my name? You know, my name is Matthias. You really don't even need to collect that, right? Because the form can automatically duct who fills it out. We see that up here. Please describe what you want, you know, uh, a better pain. And when is it due? And I can select that, I can submit it, it also gets added to the database. Now, which of, in general, right, the Notion Forms approach is, of course, the uh, much smoother one, uh, but it works best if all the questions that you, and all the things that you collect can all be database properties, right? Because that's the only thing you currently can fill. If you want people to fill out the body of a page, then you need to go with the first approach and use that. Just to give you a bit more inspiration, here's another way of how this could be laid out, right? So here on the design hall, we see all the recent requests that other teams have made. We then actually get some charts for insights, okay, like, you know, like when, uh, how does our current pipeline look like, right? So that people know, okay, probably in this week, uh, very doubtful that the team can finish another thing. But here, <laughs> around like the end of uh, November, beginning of December, much more likely that we get something. Then here we have, again, right, our form embedded on the left. And on the right, we actually see our previous requests. And we can see, okay, what is the due date? Do we have an estimation for yet, right? It just adds transparency to the whole progress and makes it much easier uh, for people to, to you know, get an idea of when it will be filled and avoids you to having to go through this permanent, you know, back and forth with the stakeholders to A, collect all the information and keep updating and reporting on the process. There's a whole lot more to building better process in Notion and I actually have a video coming off that soon. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and put on your notifications so you don't miss when it drops. It will have something to do with a really, really cool TTTR framework. So quick spoiler. Speaking of marketing requests, let me show you how you can now take your campaign ideas and turn them into stunning presentations to present these ideas to the rest of your team. You probably know that feeling, right? You've already spent a ton of time creating the perfect campaign brief, and now you really don't want to spend another few hours to create a presentation and the slides in order to you know, show that to your team lead or upper management. Here's where Gamma, an AI slide builder, comes in and it's a real game changer for marketing teams. <laughs> Let me just show you how this works and the example of the Christmas campaign for Notion Marks, my fixture Notion company. So here's the uh, interface. And what we want to do is we want to create a new deck with the help of AI. And now we can tell it, you know, how do we want to uh, create it based on a specific file, right, or a one-line prompt. Or in this case, right, we have already a detailed guide, right? We have our, our brief. So we can simply go in here, we can paste that whole brief, and I can ask it, okay, what do we want to create? Do we want to have a presentation, web page, or document? In our case, we want to go with presentation. Uh, and then we click on continue. We have a few other options to select from, right? Whether we want to, you know, keep this size or whether we want to expand it. I think all of this is good for now. Uh, so we can simply uh, click on continue, then select a specific team, right? So maybe let's go, yeah, the, the red one, maybe that's a nice Christmas one. We, we can always uh, change it later if we want something else. So let's click on uh, generate. And then we wait while it builds the presentation for us. In a second, you can see in front of your eyes, right? How it builds the whole uh, presentation slide for you based on the information you gave it and also generates the images uh, to go with it. And within a few seconds, I have a complete slide deck ready. And the really cool thing is that I'm not stuck with this. So let's say I'm actually like, now that I look at this, this like dark red, that seems a little bit moody to me. So I can simply go up to the scene and can say, actually, let's give me something something light in, instead, right? So maybe uh, I wanna use uh, this here as the background and with one click, uh, we change the whole vibe of it. We can now go in and uh, re either recreate the images or uh, add our own ones. We probably wanna have our own plots on there. And the other cool thing is, this is now just a fully uh, editable slide builder, right? So I can go into everything and I can say, okay, actually here, you know, for these individual elements, I want uh, an another uh, uh, point here or here, right? This is actually like I have some, some additional points that, that I want to add there. So whatever we have there, we have a complete drag and drop slide builder that even without AI would do a really good job at creating really cool presentation. All right, so now we have these new images, right? Much better than the originals uh, here or here, or particularly this one that was very dark before with the original version. But it was the, the style, right? The dark red. So this one I like a lot better. And yeah, that means no more late nights trying to build presentations. Just a few clicks and you're ready. 
And yeah, trust me, once your marketing team tries this flow workflow, I think there's no going back to building Google Slides from scratch. You can check out Gamma for free with the link in the description. Number five, build an upvote system for decision making. Another great use case for buttons, this time for database buttons. Now, uh, for the example, I've built this in our, you know, master content calendar that has all different content types, and then we just grouped it so that we can go through the different types. But of course, you could also do this in the multi-database setup, and then you can actually choose whether you want to, you know, do the upvoting within a content type, or whether you want to do the upvote on the master content calendar where you see everything at a glance. But the process is always the same. What you want to do is you want to have a, a Notion database button. And that uh, the automation behind that is like when this button is clicked, then please edit the page where this button was clicked on and add to the upvoted by, which is a person property, the person who clicked the button. Which means that, you know, here, if I click on this LinkedIn post, I click on upvote, you see I pop up here. And then we have a second property, which is called votes. And this is another formula, which simply takes the upvoted by and then the length of it, which counts how many people are there, right? So in this case, where both Jill and I upvoted, we have two votes. Here, it's only one vote. Now, if you don't care about like who actually voted, you could even simplify this to like a two, uh, you know, <laughs> property setup. And just whenever you click the upvote button, uh, you know, add one to this. But I mean, that can go out of hand quickly because if people click the button 10 times, right, and you get 10 votes there and you don't know where they come from. Whereas here, right, there's no way for me to, to double vote. I'm already in here. I can't give this more weight <laughs> than it actually should have. But yeah, super quick and easy way. And of course, you can go ahead, right, in another view, for example, in the sport view, then um, uh, sort by the number of votes. You can also create another formula property that displays it a little bit nicer. That's a general recommendation. That's usually best practice if you use, um, you know, boards and on a board display a number property goes on a board otherwise i'll show you what i mean if you just uh, took votes right um you just get this number and if you have several number properties then you might not know what is the vote right so for example we have our engagement here as well right if, i mean of course engagement will be much higher hopefully than the votes but still might be a bit confusing to read so having this again simple property that just takes you know our ui text and then the number and formats it nicely can be quite a nice touch oh and by the way you can download my free notion for marketing starter pack with the link in the description. Number six, streamline your competitor research. When it comes to this, you of course want to use the database in Notion to organize everything, but the probably biggest question is, okay, how do I get it into Notion in the first place? And actually, three tools that can help us out a lot here. And the first one is the official Notion Web Clipper. This is an extension for your browser, right? So Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever you're using. And what you then get is in your, uh, you know, in your menu bar, you get the icon, and then with one click, you can save um, a certain page. So when you come across, for example, a landing page of a competitor, you really like, one click and it is in Notion. Now, a few remarks here. The first thing is that the things that you can send actually to Notion are fairly limited. What will happen is that uh, you can uh, name the actual page, right? That will be uh, sent to Notion. And then you can, uh, if you have it in a database and that database has a link property, it will also send the URL uh, to Notion. And then if you, uh, depending on your settings, you can also send uh, the page content to it, right? So whatever was on that page, if that is, you know, had an article or something like that, it will send it to Notion. But if, of course, like if it's a nicely designed uh, landing page, right, it will, uh, will not be able to, to grab it correctly. So you sort of might want to like screenshot it on top of that essential. But if there's no way to like screenshot directly here from the tool. But that's where the second one comes in. This is one that has been one of the best friends of Notion Power users since the very beginning, and it's called Safe to Notion. It's also a browser extension, but this one has a few more features. For one, you can actually set up specific workflows. So you're not just limited to, you know, sending always a page name, but you can pick, and depending on what template you uh, you have, uh, it will fill out certain uh, properties already uh, for you. You can also write from the, uh, the saving options, then determine additional information, right? So you see here, uh, you have this option to and uh, take actually a screenshot of the page, add it directly in. You can um, change properties, right? You can fill something out. So if you need to like recall a lot of information uh, while you do this and not just when I grab the page itself, then this is a really, really powerful tool. But of course, it is uh, developed by the community and it uses your, um, you know, it uses your Notion login and it's not an official Notion extension. So I've been using it for a very long time, never had any issues with it. It's like a really, really cool and powerful helper if you need to capture things with more information. The one I'm most excited about, though, is Flylighter. And this one is actually built by Thomas Frank. Uh, so he and his team have been working on this for a while. Uh, and it's you still need to sign up for the waitlist, but it's really, really cool. I've had a chance to test it out. Uh, they let people in uh, occasionally. And it's 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 really, really powerful. It's really built, you know, by, uh, you know, uh, deep, deep Notion nerds that just uh, love, you know, pushing things to the max. So it has, like, a bunch of uh, cool things, like where, you know, if you highlight certain web pages, 
um, it will actually remember those web pages. So if you visit it back, but if there was an article, uh, it, it comes back to the highlights. You can set up a ton of rules of what to capture. So it's basically, uh, yeah, the Notion <laughs> web clipper uh, on steroids. Again, you, you might have to, to see, right, whether you can already use it, but definitely recommend signing up for the waitlist and then seeing like how you can leverage it to do either competitor research, right, or like to any creatives that you see that you want to save or just like content that inspires you uh, for your marketing team. So yeah, that's definitely one thing to watch. And number seven, track your marketing experiments. Notion is really great at helping you go through the whole life cycle of experiment tracking, right? From the ideation of what is it that we actually want to test, going through them in a structured way through different steps that you need in order to, you know, uh, evaluate the experiments, which ones are worth taking, to so then planning them out, conducting them all the way to at the very end, right? Like uh, seeing how well they actually work out. This is an example database, uh, but of course, right, you would uh, adjust it to your own specific needs. Just going over a few properties that I think might be helpful. The first one, of course, you want to have a hypothesis, like what is it that you're actually uh, testing, right? Uh, you want to have a status to quickly track, okay, where are we looking at? And then if you build more advanced dashboards rather than just look at the database itself, right, you can then use it to have, for example, something for the ongoing uh, experiments or just for like your ideation. You want to think about what is the success metric. And you can then use also like a duration property to schedule it out if you want to see a calendar. I love for, uh, in terms of type of properties, maybe a quick word. I really like to use um, the, or like limit the use of free text feeds, right? Like um, the success metric. In this case, you kind of have to because the success metric is probably very different all the time. Unless you say, okay, we have, you know, one or five metrics and uh, if it doesn't increase one of them, we don't care. Um, but in this case, this uh, requires a bit more free form, but for pretty much anything else, right? Things that can be the same across several elements, you always want to use then at least um, a select field because that allows you to then filter and sort and categorize things accordingly. Really fun thing that we can do in Notion is then to have like certain scoring fields, right? To estimate, okay, like how uh, is this thing going to perform or like what do we think, right? In this case, we have estimate effort, potential impact, uh, risk and strategic alignment and a score from like zero to 10 in order to output the actual, you know, evaluation. And then we have um, an analysis for our overall value, um, what we think this um, means for the project. The last thing is for your formula, you can actually weigh it, right? So you can, for example, say, um, for like the street or like for like risk and uh, you know estimate effort, we of course wanted uh, inverted, right? So like a lower thing is better. You can also say we put more emphasis on strategic alignment. Since you can write that formula yourself, right? The world pretty much is your oyster. Uh, then we just have like the, the standard thing, right? Like we can have a total spend and ROI, and then a little neat help property called inline helper that we're going to talk about in a second. But of course, we can take it one step further, right? If the notion was all about only the database, right? Then it's just like a glorified uh, spreadsheet, more or less. But since every entry in our database uh, is its page and its page itself, we can then use it to restructure the process that we go through. So let's take a look at the limited edition uh, Notion Mark design to increase ads from my fictional company that sells Notion Marks. Great company. All right. So first thing we see is that we're using the new Notion uh, layout feature to help us structure the information. Um, I've outsourced sort of like the supporting properties here to the site, to our sidebar, where we have like our two groups, right, for analysis and for other. You can also collapse it by clicking either here on these three dots to like just really focus on what's going on here. And then we see that we pinned the three most pro important properties, right, what's the analysis value, what's the status, and what's the duration. And then we highlight uh, a few of the supporting metrics, right, like what are we actually talking about, what are we trying to improve, and the ROI. By the way, really left it now for like these number of fields that we highlight here on the page. You can blow them up a little bit draw more attention to them. And then in the body of the page, you'll see that I have these three toggles. And that's one thing that I like to do for longer pages, right, to really help break things up uh, and make sure you're not overwhelmed when you open it up. And you can really go, okay, like, what's, you know, our planning step, what's our execution step, what's our um, review step. And for, uh, let's dive into the into the planning one, just to give you a few examples of how you can set this up for your company. Uh, you can then go basically through and say, okay, when we set up a new experiment, what do we need to think about, right? What is the general idea when we pitch this? And then one thing that's really, really fun is to actually pull the properties of that page here into the body, right? So that you don't need to uh, go up back here to your structured data to actually edit these sticks. I'll show you in a second how this is done. But as you can see, so we have our hypothesis here, and this is just a page shuttle. Then we have success metrics, which uh, pulls in the success metric from above. And of course, if we change this, right, this is actually like supposed to be 35%. Uh, you, of course, see, right, like this, it changes up here, right? This is the same, same property. Same for success metrics, resource required, um, like an AI body I want to talk about in a second. Um, but the, the other result is that, for example, for your scoring, right, for, for this overall analysis, we can now fill that out here in the content, right, in the context of the whole page where we have all the information rather than having to go back to our page to update things, things, right? So if I say actually the risk, uh, let's drop the risk to one. This is like an absolute brain element, right? We see 
that um, our uh, high uh, risk analysis value right, uh, jumped up to 30. And like, of course, like the property itself, right, has been updated as well. In order to build this yourself, you need to actually go to your database and make two modifications. The first thing that you need is uh, this inline habit that I was talking about. And this is uh, a relation property where you just relate the database to itself. That's step one. Step two is then to set up an automation on your database. Say, okay, whenever I add a new page to this, please automatically link it to itself. I'm going to show you, uh, like these were like test entries that I created before that, so they don't have it linked yet, but let, let's just add like this new uh, test uh, experiment here. And you'll see in a second here on the side, it will start linking it to itself. And what this allows us then is to go into our page template, right, for the new experiment. And then uh, in the page template, create a pull in uh, these self referential filters. So this here is a link view of the experiments page, um, but we've hidden all properties except for the one that we want to look at. And then we set up a filter where we say, uh, please only show me the uh, the one entry uh, that is linked <laughs> that that this is linked to, right? So basically, what you get is then you can click into any uh, pretty much any page, and the only thing it will show you is the entry itself, right? So let's actually you know like manually quickly um, uh, link this here, so you you see it, right? The automation don't have to do with it. Uh, we open it up, and then when I look here at the pre-experiment planning, I of course only see uh, this specific entry. Whereas for the notion marks, I will see um, the notion marks entry, and for the text experiment, that one. And that allows you to put, really use you know, Notion's properties as inline variables in the body of the page and really, really improve uh, the UI of your setup. Now, there's one last thing I would like to quickly highlight, and that is the use of uh, AI custom blocks. If you're using Notion AI, and you really should, in particular if you uh, have your knowledge inside Notion because Q&A is insane. But uh, another really cool use case is to, when you take these, these longer pages right where you ask people to go through and fill it out in a structured way, to insert uh, these AI properties to help, you know, surface other angles. One of my favorite ones uh, is red teaming, right? Um, basically, a red team is some uh, a team that is tasked with like finding all the loopholes and all the weaknesses in your ideas and structure. And oftentimes when you plan something, that's really hard to think about the risk because you're all excited about this project, right? You maybe pitched it, you want to really convince people that it's a good idea. But it's also a good idea to think about all the things that could go wrong. So rather than having someone on the team, right, who has to uh, play the bad person, Set up a custom prompt, right? Ask it to take into account uh, the things that you have filled out here that you created. And then every time, right, you spawn in your experiment, you can just, once you fill it out, generate this and then see what risks uh, AI science in this. But of course, just one example, right? There like, might be a lot of other situations. It might be at the very end, right, that you might want to uh, generate a small Slack message that you can send to update the team or, you know, please write a pitch uh, to senior management. Whatever it is, right, that you need to routinely do based on the work that you've already done, uh, add these AI blocks to your page to make your life a little bit easier. And now for the bonus tip. Build yourself a UTM link generator. You know how annoying it is to create UTM links and to you know, go, go to the Google page that like builds them for you. So uh, if you set this up once, this will be a huge time saver. Now, the way this works is very straightforward. You want to have um, a separate database. And in this one, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have then the name of your, your campaign, right? Or what you want to create it. You have a, a root URL property, which is, you know, this is the main link. And then pretty much any type of uh, UTM parameter that you want to add to it, you want to have as a separate property. Right? So you could actually also do this on your master content calendar if you want to generate the links there. But sometimes you might want to create several links for it. Right? So in this case, you should have it in a separate database so that per you know, asset, you can generate several links. So in this case, what we do right, is we have the channel, we have something other like a free text field, and we actually have the campaign that this belongs to. Right? So this is our master content calendar, and this is um, just like the specific link that we, that we want to have here. And we see we get our um, uh, URL constructed here. We can simply uh, copy it, and we can now paste it somewhere. And the way this works on the back end is it's, this is a formula, right? So we click in there, and we see we take the URL, and then we add our question mark, right, which is always an indicator for the UTM. And then we have a bunch of if statements. And that's just to make it more flexible, right? If you always fill out the, the properties and you know that for sure, right? Then you can uh, omit it and can just, you know, just append uh, basically all uh, values there. In this case, what I want to do is I want to check, do we have a channel value? And only then append the channel part. And then very, very important, <laughs> this last part, right? Once we've constructed uh, our whole string, we want to call replace all and make sure that we properly encode it. There might be several encoding steps that we want to do, but actually browsers nowadays encode uh, most of it uh, anyway. So the most important part is that we encode uh, the, the blanks. Otherwise, it will be a problem, right? So we'll not replace it with that. And if we have any other uh, special characters, right, that we typically need to uh, replace in there, right? If you know that's the case, you can simply, um, you know, uh, add it there. It takes a little bit of setup time, but again, once it's done, super simple to create a new one, right? So we can say, okay, this is our Notion uh, 
mug um, Black uh, Friday special. My root uh, URL is again this one, which is the one that you can go to to get all my templates for free. This type it's not Google Ads. This time it's like you know um, something uh, else. Uh, it is like even uh, better, and the campaign is still the Notion Christmas. Like, actually, this is like my the interview. Uh, let's take this as the campaign. And then we see we get now our different uh, URL as, uh, assigned here, Matthias Rank Day, and then we have question mark channel something and so on and so on. Everything is correctly coded, and within just you know, 10 seconds, I have my UTM thing generated. So that's it for my seven favorite Notion use cases for marketing teams. Did I miss something? Now, if this video convinced you to roll out Notion for your company, but you don't quite know where to get started, well, I've got you covered. Here is my ultimate Notion for Business setup guide. It has everything you need to go from an empty page to a fully functional company workspace. Just click here and I'll see you in a second.